Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to put into practice the things that we've learned about congruent figures. So here we have two sets of figures. These are two triangles. These are obviously not triangles. They have a, kind of a random shape, but they each have four sides and four corners or four angles. And we're given here that the figure ABCD, going from here to here to here to here, is congruent to the figure EFGH. Now, it may not appear that way, but we're going around the figure in a congruent way, if you want to call it that. Notice we start from this right angle here, we go to the other right angle here. Here we went from E to F, going from A to B. Then we went from B to C, F to G, from C to D, G to H. So you can see then that, well, if they tell us that these are congruent, that then implies that all the sides or all corresponding sides have the same length and all corresponding angles have the same angle. So let's try to find all the corresponding sides and all the corresponding angles. So for sides going from A to B, that means that has to have the same length as going from E to F. So we can say that this side has the same length as this side. Going from B to C must have the same length as going from F to G, so this must be the same as this, or in other words, have the same length. Going from C to D must be the same length as going from G to H. And then going from D back to A, that has to be the same length as going from H back to E. So here we have identified all the corresponding sides. Corresponding angles, we could say that angle A must be corresponding to angle E. So I guess we could do this if we want to, although that is an indication that this is the same angular size, about 90 degrees. Here you could say that this here must be the same as this here, so that is the same angular size. Then we come to this angle here, this angle must have the same angular measure as this. And then finally, the fourth angle right here, one, two, three, four, must have the same as this angle here, one, two, three, four. So, now that we've determined that, we've determined all the corresponding sides and all the corresponding angles, now what we can do is find the value for x, because these angles right here, angle D, must have the same angular measure as angle H, so therefore we can say that 4x plus 5 degrees must equal 105 degrees. If that's true, then we can say that 4x plus 5 must equal 105. Subtract 5 from both sides, that means 4x must equal 100, and then divide both sides by 4, and we get x is equal to 25. So we have the value for x by assuming that angle D is congruent to angle H. Now coming over here, here we have a slightly different task to do. Here we're not told that the two angles are congruent, but we're supposed to show, and I think I'm missing something on this side, I should have this as angle uh, C, D, so we go from A to B to E, C, B, D. All right, C, B, D. There we go, I was missing my triangle over here. All right, so now we're supposed to show that those two triangles are congruent. Well, that means that both uh, the, the corresponding sides must have the same length. We can see that this has the same length as this, this has the same length as this, and this has the same length as that. So we can see that all the corresponding sides are congruent. But what about the corresponding angles? Well, they gave us one more piece of information. We're, we're, showed, uh, we're shown here by the little arrows that side EA is parallel to side DC. And then here we can call this the transversal, which means that the altern and alternate interior angles must be congruent. In other words, this angle must be the same as this angle, because these two sides are the same. Here's the transversal, so the alternate interior angles must be congruent. We can then look at these two angles and also say that those angles must be congruent, because they're alternate interior, interior angles. And then finally, we can say that these two angles are opposite angles, and they must therefore be congruent as well. And so by that, we can see that not all are all sides, the corresponding sides congruent, we can also see that the corresponding angles are congruent. 
by the rules that we learned before. Again, we have two parallel sides. Here we have two transversals. We know that the alternate interior angles must be the same, or we should say must be congruent. And here we have two opposite angles. They must be congruent as well. And by that definition, we can see that, yes, indeed, we have shown that those two triangles are indeed congruent.